HBC Dodgers Radio, welcome back to another episode uh, discussing high-level issues in the historically black college community. Today, we are privileged to have uh, the great senator from the great state of Georgia, Nakima Williams. She is from the 39th district of the state of Georgia here today with us to talk about uh, the the action of several uh, Democratic members of, of the state legislature uh, in rescinding their support of Senate Bill 273, uh, which called for the uh, realignment of three of the state's public HBCUs under a single system. So, Madam Senator, it's a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you for having me. Uh, talk about um, today's activity. Uh, there was uh, engagement with the public in the media to talk about uh, the issue of Senate Bill 273. What was today's experience like and what was some of the feedback that you've received thus far? So earlier today, um, I actually withdrew my name from the legislation on SB 273, as did four of my other colleagues who were co-sponsors of the bill. Um, The primary sponsor held a press conference. I was not a part of that press conference because I had already withdrawn my name and issued my own press release um, denouncing the legislation because I am an alumni of the Talladega College, the Alpha Lara Vega, and there is never a time that I would do anything that would jeopardize our institutions, the historical values and importance of them and the uniqueness that they all hold. Um, Just last year, I created a study committee, SR 977, which passed the Senate unanimously, and we had meetings throughout the state to talk about ways that the state of Georgia, we have 10 HBCUs here in Georgia, Mm -hmm. and that is more than any other state in the country. And so I wanted to talk about ways that the state could better partner with our HBCUs, not just the public ones. And this was framed to me initially that um, of coming up with a governance structure that Um, could make recommendations on how the state could better partner and strengthen our HBCUs. Um, As a result of the study committee, there wasn't one body that we could look to that could deal with the private institutions and the state institutions. And so this was framed to me um, in a way that the legislation did not actually support. And so that's why I withdrew my name, as did um, my colleague, Senator Tanya Anderson, who is an alumnus of Alabama State University, Senator Gail Davenport, who's an alumnus of Spelman College, Senator Harold Jones, who's an alumnus of South Carolina State University, and Senator Freddie Powell Sims, who is an alumnus of Fort Valley State University. We all withdrew our support and took our names off of the legislation before it was even withdrawn today. And so we wanted to make it clear that there was never a point in the legislative process that we were supportive of a realignment or um, changing the names or a merger of any of these institutions. This was These um, same members were part of the study committee that I led over... Um, the summer that ended on December 31st, and the whole idea was to come up with a way to continue the work from our study committee of finding a governance structure or some type of commission or body that can make recommendations to the state on what the schools wanted in a way to partner and be have the state be more supportive. And it, was, it um, would have been inclusive of public and private institutions. And so that is still something that will be ongoing that I am going to continue to work on on my behalf without um, the work that Senator Jackson is doing separately. So whatever he's doing, I'm not a part of that and have made that very clear to him and to the public. And I'm moving forward with my own work to continue the work that we did from my um, SR 977 that passed the Senate body last year. Can you give us some insight on the timeline and the structure of how this goes down? Because this bill was filed according to the legislative docket on a Thursday. We reported, this bill was filed on Thursday. Right. Um, we, we reported Thursday on it. was a very busy day. Mm-hmm. Um, day 39 in the chamber um, where So we only have a 40-day legislative session, this bill, but we have a biennial session, which means anything filed this year is still alive for next year as well. So this bill was filed on Thursday, day 39, when it was very busy. And we have a posture where if one of my colleagues, especially someone that I trust, is working on someone, especially if it's dealing with um, our historically black colleges and universities, I want to be supportive. And so I, after reading the cover page, and we talked about coming up with this governance structure, because he was a part of the HBC study committee that I led last year, um, I was under the impression that this was a continuation of that, coming up with that governance structure. And 
in fact, when I later found time to go through all of the details and talk with more people, um, that was not the purpose of the legislation and not something that I was willing to put my name on or be supportive of. And so this all happened. The, the legislation was just introduced and signed on Thursday and um, on day 39 of a 40-day legislative session when lots of things are going back and forth. And so it's unfortunate that um, the bill wasn't properly explained when it was initially introduced, or um, it would have been a single signer on the legislation, and the members that I mentioned earlier would never have signed on to it. it, it, was it so are, are you saying, uh, is it your impression that most of the people that were signers on the bill did not read through it before it was filed so the bill was already filed before it was brought to us so the way that the process works is the sponsor files the legislation Mm -hmm. and then looks for people to support it with him so the legislation was already filed before it was brought to any other members what what is it about specifically about that file proposal that was was a non-starter was it the changing of the branding and the in the the nomenclature of each of the schools was it funding was it the The, governance one of the biggest things to me um like sb 273 would have created a board that would have taken full control of albany state university fort valley state university and savannah state university and it would have allowed um our current governor brian kemp to select 11 of the 13 board members which was a non-starter for me 11 of the 13 board members um and it would not have been a legislative body like these are people picked by our current Republican governor to um, govern and come and lead this new governance structure of our three state HBCUs. And so that was one of the biggest things for me. Um, And then I, I'm an advocate at heart. I stand by my people wholeheartedly. And I heard from people on, I'm a huge social media. I'm the youngest member of my my Senate Democratic Caucus. So I probably use social media more than most, Mm -hmm. but I heard from people and I wanted to hear what people were saying. And I love the fact that I heard from current students and um, young alumni and older alumni alike about their concerns around this. And I want to be supportive and I want to do everything that I can to move our HBCUs forward and make sure that they are able to thrive and continue continue in perpetuity so that I have a three-year-old son who I know that one day, if he's expecting mama to pay for it, he will be attending an HBCU. (laughs) And I want to make sure that our schools are around and ready for my little Carter Cakes to attend. Um, Both of my parents graduated from HBCUs and I attended, I graduated from an HBCU. And so I um, never want to do anything that is going to put our schools in jeopardy by giving up any, um, control that we currently have and now there are going to be times when we need to work with other people to make sure that we're getting the resources and funding that we need to make sure that we're able to continue to exist but that does not mean relinquishing control that does not mean changing names of historical institutions that have been around for year, for decades and we need to make sure that we are doing everything to uplift them by allowing them to still have their own autonomy well that that is a, uh, an excellent point to bring up because georgia is the single state in the country that has developed through its higher education system principles of consolidation, meaning we're going to we're going to put these schools together. And they've been doing that over the last seven years. One of them and already has ha- been happening with our PWIs. This has been happening with other institutions, but we have been continuing to push back against this. And so this isn't a new effort, but it is a new effort to try to get alumni of HBCUs to sign on and carry the water. And that is not something that I'm willing to do. But just to be clear, there has been one consolidation of it historically black Albany state and Darton state college, which in which Darton was consolidated into Correct. Albany state of sorts. So, and, and clearly you guys have been studying the issue going back some time. So if, if, if we know that Georgia is a state of where they're actively trying to merge institutions and you guys have been studying the statistics on enrollment and funding and funding cuts and uh, where people are going and, and where these schools are being merged. And typically they're being proximate to HBCUs. What what would you say or what has the data shown you that we need to do in the short and long term to deal with or at least to work with other folks in the state to say preserve these schools? Because if this isn't the plan, yeah. what what would it be? 
our what what our study committee showed us there is a model in Louisiana, and we that is the model that we're looking to find a governance structure to work under, which is why um, portions of this bill would have been okay with me, but not the ch- name change and the consolidation of any schools. But what our study committee um, report, the final report, and I can send that to you after this call so that you can have it as well for any listeners that might want to view it. It's on our Georgia State Senate website, mm-hmm. but. There are governance structures all over the country, and there are ways that other states are supporting even their private institutions, and we don't do that here in Georgia. And so we are looking for ways that the state can better partner with our institutions, not control, not come up with a new governance board that um, is giving control, but a commission that can make recommendations of what the schools need. And that's where it has to come from. It has to come from the actual institutions um, having the conversations and not a governance board where it's a overwhelming majority of appointees by our current governor. And that is not something that I'm ever going to go for. So we need to go back to the drawing board, back to the table, and revisit the report from the study committee that was just produced on December 31st. It has not been that long, so it's fairly new data. And we need to pull this information and make sure that we are moving forward with what the, the recommendations of the the study committee from last year recommended and not coming up with a new structure that will in fact not um, strengthen but change the autonomy, change the names and change the entire structure of our current state institutions. And I'm not just looking at working on our state institutions. I'm also looking at our private institutions. Talladega College, my school, is a private institution. um, And a lot of the schools that are having some of the um, financial problems and enrolling enrollment decline are private institutions. And I think it's up for us to look at all of these um, institutions when we're looking at the steps that we need to take to move forward. And then the final question, how much time do you think it would it would take to do that because currently the three H the three public HBCUs are under the University System of Georgia, which is their governance board works closely <laughs> in tandem with what the governor wants. So that's the system we operate under now, which is the one that you you guys did not favor under the new proposal. Um, but how how quickly can something be done? Because as we know, enrollments falling every year, presidents are changing out every year almost, or every other year at all three of the institutions. There, this is a I mean, something time, can be so. done. Something, something can be done now. We can have a proposal that is ready to go at the start of the next legislative session. We already have um, a recommendation. We just need to find a way to um, fit in both our private and state institutions. I've been, I'm working with stakeholders on getting this completed. And it was my understanding that this was a next step forward into that work. But I quickly found that this was um, actually not a continuation of the work that I have been doing for um, our HBCUs in the state. And so there, there is time. And I know that um, we want to get things done quickly. But I mean, I don't. I wish I knew the years because I would state them. But Talladega College was founded in 1867, and so we've been here since 1867 and waiting a couple of more months until the legislature reconvenes is not going to um, close our doors.